So are you ready to move to Dallas? Well, let me just tell you this. I have a few tips that you have to know before you pack your bags and make this big move. So let's go ahead and hop into the video. Hey guys, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be giving you guys 10 practical tips that are gonna help make your move to Dallas like so much smoother, so much easier, and so much more, like you're gonna be so much more prepared with these 10 tips. For me, moving to Dallas was kind of like a spur of the moment decision and I really only had like three months to kind of do so. So I didn't have the time and opportunity to do all of this research. But now that I've been here about two years, I can help you guys make this move more of a smooth transition for you. So but let's go ahead and hop into these tips. So first tip is gonna to be to research the city and neighborhood that you wanna live in. And when I say research, I mean like do your research. First of all, understand the layout of the city. The Metroplex is huge. Like it can literally take you an hour to get across the freaking Metroplex. So be mindful of that when you're thinking about a place to live. You don't wanna live in a place where there aren't things around that you like. So figure out like some hangout spots or things that you like to do. Make sure that that is in the area for you. Also, move into a neighborhood or a city depends on where you are in life. If you're a family, you might wanna live more in the north suburbs. They have a lot of houses, they have good school districts. So that's something to think about if you have a family coming with you. Um, if you're a single person or if you're like a young couple, you could probably live in a more trendy place like Midtown or Deep Ellum um, where there's lots of nightlife, not lots of like restaurants and local spots for you to kind of just go to. It really just depends on what your lifestyle is and where you are in life and what you like to do. But do that research before you make the move because what you don't want to happen is for you to move and it's just not the vibe. So also, if you have the opportunity, come and visit these neighborhoods. Visit the local spots. See if you like the vibe because people might be weird or the vibe might be weird. So do that because Fortunately for me, I moved here sight unseen and I ended up loving my neighborhood. I live in a north um, a North Dallas suburb, so it's like very like family oriented, very chill. I'm not a party girl, so it's kind of like perfect for me. But like somebody who loves to have fun or like go out and stuff, you might not like it up here because like the stuff that we, when we do go hang out with people, we have to like go to Addison or go to Deep Ellum or go to Midtown. So it's like we have to travel 20, 30 minutes to get there. So if that's not your vibe, you gotta just kind of figure out where you fit or where you will fit. So tip number two is going to be compare the cost of living. So I'll really look at like what the rent is here, what the utilities are, start to look at like groceries, transportation, Things that you frequently spend money on, look what the prices are kind of here. So you can do a cost analysis to figure out if the move actually makes sense. There are some cost of living calculators that I used before I made my big move. Just need, you need to know how much money you need to make to live comfortably here. So I will put those. And to negotiating a salary for my move here. And that takes me into my next point. Look at the job market and opportunities that are out there. Research what the going salary is in those areas because a lot of times like you can make a lot more money by just simply moving your geographical location. Like Michigan is paying nothing in comparison to what you can make here. And they have huge companies here. They have Pepsi, they have um, Texas Instruments, they have Toyota. Like there are a lot of big companies here that are hiring. So don't sleep on it. Start to look for those opportunities. Start to network for those opportunities. Get on LinkedIn, slide into recruiters DMs. And it sounds like it's annoying or it's like cringe, but baby, one recruiter is gonna see your stuff and your resume is gonna end up on somebody's desk. That is what happened for me. When I tell you I went to the company that I wanted to work for, I found all the recruiters that worked there and I sent them all the same message. I'm looking to move to Dallas, do you have any opportunities? Like, don't be, like, close mouths don't get fed. If you want the job, you have to hustle for it, honestly. I mean, if you really want something. And two would be to join, like, Facebook groups. So. And Facebook groups, a lot of times they post opportunities to where you can honestly get a job or not even just get a job to where you can possibly meet people and start your networking a little bit early. So definitely start to think about those things. Tip number four is going to be figure out if you want to rent or you want to buy. I definitely say if you're moving by yourself or you're moving across the country, 
rent first even though i know they say buying is the smarter decision but i would say rent first just because like everything is so far away from here you might move here and you're like yeah i don't really like this area that i'm in i would rather live in this area so even if that means renting and renting a house because you feel like an apartment is too small i feel like renting offers better flexibility options for you and i feel like buying is a major decision so i feel like unless you have like a family or something I would definitely say renting would be the best option at first and then obviously once you get down here you learn your way around you figure out what areas you like you figure out what's close to your job then start to look for housing opportunities for yourself tip number five is going to be all about transportation so they do have a public transportation here it is called the dark they have buses and they have trains um, there's actually a train line right outside this window in front of me and I hear the train go by every 15 minutes or whatever. Um, but they have these trains to where you can literally take this this train downtown. You can take it to Lower Greenville. You can take it to Addison. It's just like you can take this dart wherever you need to go. So if you're a person who you don't want to bring your car immediately, if there is a dart in your area, that might be a great thing for you because you don't necessarily need your car immediately because they do have that public transportation now me i'm from detroit like i've never taken public transportation um and we do have buses there but it's just like i've always had a car and like everybody in my family had a car like we drive but like the job i work at now they have an office in chicago and a lot of those people take the train to work so it is a normal thing for people to take public transportation and sh i've gotten on the dart before and I didn't pay for it so i don't even know if it cost money so don't quote me on that though what your your commute is and when it comes to transportation because it's like when i say everything is far here like it can take you an hour literally to get across town so you might have to think about getting a toll tag if you do have a car because the traffic is horrendous here and you can sit in traffic for hours and i'm gonna lie and people who are like natives here they don't they don't be having toll tags they're like i'm not getting on a toll but it's like, I'm not about to sit in traffic for an hour if there's a quicker route. I don't care. It costs like a dollar every exit or something. I mean, fortunately for me, I do make good enough money to where I just literally, my toll tag reloads every $30. So once I spend $30, it auto debits another $30 from my checking account. I wouldn't know because I don't miss the $30. But I know I don't be sitting in traffic because I'm going to get on the toll road. So think about that. And then also... This kind of goes back to picking out your neighborhoods because certain neighborhoods you don't necessarily need a car because things are more walkable more bikeable um there are a lot of like local things for you to do within your neighborhood or your city you might not actually need a car for the area that you're in because it might cost money to park your car and store your car when it's just easier for you to get up and walk to work or walk to the coffee shop or walk to the grocery store like here like there's the whole foods is like five minutes from my house so if i wanted to walk to whole foods i could everybody here has these little um wagons that they carry their groceries in anyway so it's like there is space and opportunity in some areas and some neighborhoods where you don't necessarily need a car so do that when it comes to your research as well social life ah I'm gonna give you as much advice as I can, but I'm not a social butterfly. Um, I lived here for a year and I, I don't think I put myself out there as much as I could have. Um, I don't really know too many people my age either. Like I work for an insurance company and everybody there, like the youngest people, it might be a girl who is there who is like 35, 36. And she actually just reached out to me. She was like, we should hang out. So, okay, it's, it's working out. It might be a year and a half later, but it's starting to work out. But when it comes to having a social life here, there is plenty of space and opportunity to have a social life. So many people are moving here from different places in the world. Like literally there are apps and groups like there's a Dallas Run Club. They meet on, I think, Tuesdays and Sundays and they run at night and then they all go to a bar after and stuff like that. And honestly, I think I want to start that. Um, me and John were kind of talking about it, but that just seems like something fun to do. Also, um there is an app i did download and it's called like geneva and there are different like interest groups in there so there's like a group for people who like to knit there's a group for people who like to do yoga there's a group of people who like to do brunch like it's oh it's like an app that is 
divided upon interest so if you're a person who might be introverted like me that might be something that you can do because it's like split up upon interest so it's like it's kind of easier to connect with people who have similar interests so find a group that interests you and that's a way for you to get out and meet people if you're not just like super bold and gonna go to like happy hour because that's i'm not gonna do that I'm not even gonna hold you up but people do it and i don't know a lot of people live here and this is their first time living here and they have tons of friends so it's plenty of space and opportunity for it um and if you don't want to do apps like the church i go to has a huge like networking community of people there's somebody there for everybody there's a group for everybody so it's like there's ways to have a social life here it's just you have to go out there and get it too also so but even though my fiance just moved here um last year so i feel like i do have a little bit more of a social life now because he knows a lot more people and they're like people from our college live here so we we hang out with them more frequently now so it's like okay i'm getting out there i'm getting out there seven is going to be a few essentials that i want you guys to think about before you move um if you have like the same insurance or you're going to be getting a new insurance start to look at like different providers like doctors dentists because i don't know i haven't had a good experience with that here so i would definitely say do your research ahead of time to find you a good physician or dentist down here um, also start to scope out things that you like or things that you would frequent like banks and grocery stores so I'm just gonna tell you now move near an HEB HEB is gonna be the best grocery store here hands down and then they also have Central Market which is like a bougie HEB it's owned by HEB but it's like the bougie version it's like Whole Foods had a baby and it's like bougie i love it but it's like stupid expensive so i'm not gonna just shop there on purpose but they also carry the central market brands in heb and it's honestly like cheaper at heb so just just go to heb i'm just telling you now you're not gonna regret it go to heb tip number eight is to really think about your safety and security here um that was a big thing for me like i wanted to make sure i moved in an area that i knew was safe because i'm a girl and i was moving alone it's literally just me and my dog well when i moved here um but the apartment that i'm in i have a gate like our apartment is like gated well not the apartment our parking structure is gated so you have to have the code or a key fob to get into the parking structure um i haven't had any problems on like not feeling safe like i feel so safe here like i mean when i first moved here i was just like more so nervous because i i had like just a fear of living alone but like this place feels like uberly safe to me and i know i get a lot of comments on my last texas video on people's concerns for like safety because a lot of times when you read the reviews for these apartments safety is something that pops up a lot so if you guys want to know how to find like a good apartment that is safe please let me know i can probably do a video for you guys on that but really take into account safety especially if you're a girl you live by yourself or you're a single mom you have kids like really think about that like look up the sex offender list look up the areas that are crime like i mean in any city you go to they're gonna there's gonna be crime but do your extra precautions before moving because you don't want to just move into like somebody else's ghetto and i hate to say it like that because People tell me all the time, like my fiance be like, you act like you're not from Detroit. And I'm like, I'm from Detroit, but I know my Detroit. I don't know Dallas's ghetto. So it's like, I don't want to move somewhere and be in somebody else's ghetto because I don't know them. I don't know how they do things. Like, I don't know that culture. So I'm not going to do it. I mean, I mean, if you get what I'm saying, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. But tip number nine is going to be have all your documents and stuff in order. Like, be organized when it comes to that because... When I moved here, like, I didn't really have, like, a moving checklist, and I wish I would have had a moving checklist. I forgot, like, so much stuff. Um, and luckily, I still had my apartment for, like, one month, so my mom and my fiancé, they cleaned it out. Um, some stuff is still in storage, because my mom actually moved here, but she brought some stuff down here for me a few times. Um, and then they cleaned up the apartment for me, but it would have been nice to have a checklist, so I would have knew all these things before I moved but I also like kind of moved at the spur of a moment kind of thing so yeah but also when I moved here they just do things like a lot different here I kind of feel like when it comes to like paperwork for apartments 
and I had been emailing with the same leasing agent the whole time so she had all my info she had my renters insurance um, she had my info from the electric department to get that cut on and it was just like she had all of this our stuff already available and it was to my understanding when I came in I would get a tour and she would already have like everything ready for me to go but she wasn't at work that day and I got somebody else and she was like so rude to me she was like you need this you need that and I'm like I don't know what that is like I moved here from Michigan and like I just got here last night and I feel like you're being very rude and she's like oh I'm sorry like and kind of try to like clean it up but it's like just have all your paperwork in order and keep it in a safe space and even when you get here and you get your lease because sometimes an apartment would try to try you so make sure you just have all your documentation in one place birth certificate um passport social security card like thank god john is here because he is way more like organized than me so he has all of my stuff like in a safe or whatever but like keep all of that stuff together because you're going to need to have your birth certificate social security cards especially like if you're going to a new job they're going to need that stuff for your i9 stuff so have all that stuff secure organized and ready to go and the last tip tip 10 tip 10 my favorite tip of all stay positive and be patient moving away from everything that you've ever known moving away from family that's gonna take a toll on your emotions you're gonna be homesick and it's just like give yourself grace and time to get adjusted get adjusted to your new space get adjusted to your new city get adjusted to this new culture like texas is a whole culture within itself like i don't even know if you can consider texas america like texas is legit like its own country so give yourself space and opportunity and grace to adapt to this new space and this new part of your life um it is a beautiful experience to be able to move off by yourself, move away from your comfort zone, move away from your friends, move away from your family. Sure, it can be a lonely and isolated experience, but this is an opportunity for you to go ghost and come out and blossom into something great. This is a space where nobody knows you. You can build up your network and be whoever you want to be here. Like you don't have that scrutiny of like, oh, these people know me. I can't do this. I can't do that. There's space and opportunity for you here. So I just say stay open, have an open mind. Something that I told myself the entire first year here. Well, I was pretty much so when I got here. I never felt like I was moving back home. But I, I told myself before I actually moved here, the year is only a lease, Sierra. You do not have to stay here. This is not a permanent decision. You can always move back home. Like, I mean, with my mom moving here, it kind of made it weird to so, like move back home. But like, when I go back home, I stay at my dad's house. My bed is actually at my dad's house. So it's like, if I did not want to live here anymore, I could leave. It's not permanent. Like, don't think of it like end all be all. Like, you can do whatever you want in this life. But I say definitely go after it. Just do it. Move away from your hometown. Like, you will grow so much in ways you didn't even think that could happen but you also have to be patient and allow yourself to go through the emotions of that sure you'll be homesick but guess what that's why they had an airplane they have a train they have a bus i'm not taking a bus to text i mean to michigan though that is a long ass drive i will hop on that two and a half hour airplane ride but like budget in money so you can go home or hell tell your friends to come visit you that's the thing like People will be sad, like, oh, I want you to come back home. We miss you, we miss you. But nobody ever will come visit you. And, like, you have to really think about those things. People will want you to come home so bad. But when I tell you, y'all, it's nothing at home. It's nothing at home. You're going to have a way better life moving somewhere else, especially if you you have the opportunity to be something and make more money and just have more opportunity for yourself. Your hometown might be the thing that's holding you back. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any more questions about moving to Dallas, please let me know in the comments below and I would love to do a video for you guys. Never be scared to leave your hometown to grow. As much as you love your hometown, it's the one place that'll kill your dream if you stay there too long. You move to a new city, you lose nothing. You only gain an opportunity that can change your life. The thing about your hometown is it's never gonna change. You can always come back and do the same thing that you've been doing with the same people. But you go to a new city, it might be a new relationship that could change your life. It might be a new job opportunity that never been possible for you.